This year is about to end, but for me, there's still too many loose ends. Here are the 3D printing mysteries that we need to solve in 2024. Normally at this time of year, I make a Q&A video to celebrate the anniversary of the channel. But this year it's different. I have some questions of my own and I'd like your help in answering them. Some of these are serious, some of these are not. Some of these are technical and others just relate to the community. They're all worth pondering, so let's begin. We're going to start with something that perplexes me. Whatever happened to non-planar 3D printing? You may remember in 2019, I made this video. Let me give a brief recap. Regular 3D printing is just a series of XY movements stacked on top of each other as individual layers, more like 2.5D printing. On shallow surfaces, the stair-stepping from this is quite obvious. And what non-planar 3D printing offered was true three-dimensional movement using X, Y, and Z all at the same time. Not only was this mesmerizing to watch, but on shallow surfaces, print quality was greatly improved with the layer line stair-stepping 100% eliminated. Obviously, this process suited some geometry more than others, but the results were great, so why hasn't it taken off? Well, one problem is that most 3D printers don't really have the required clearance around the nozzle for these three-dimensional extrusions to take place without a collision. In fact, in that video, I had to remove a bunch of parts to tidy up the print head and give the required clearance. This is a hassle, but it's also completely doable. No doubt, the community would find a way. The other problem is that the software I tested was an experimental fork of Slick3R, and for me to run it, I needed to set up a virtual Linux machine and compile everything over command line to unlock the non-planar 3D printing settings. For me, the surprising part was based on the popularity of my video and all of the feedback at the time, this was something the community was very interested in, yet it's never really taken off. Shout out to Stefan from CNC Kitchen for making a series of videos on non-planar 3D printing. But the catch is, as with my video, the process is not available without a certain level of tinkering. You can't just download a normal slicer and use it. There are still some other options around, and some of them, like this one you're seeing here, look incredibly promising. But if we click through to the shop, we can see that it's mainly modified nozzles to give the required clearance. And if we wade far enough into the shop pages, we'll see that there is a software option, but once we open that and read the description, we can see that it's an add-on for Rhino modeling software. So again, not useful to the majority of people. Considering that me and many of you would like to do more non-planar 3D printing, the question is, when will it be available in a regular slicer? Prusa Slicer team, if you're watching this, I'm hoping you will be the chosen ones, given your track record of innovation, and also that the version I tested was based on Slick 3R, just like your slicer. If you also want non-planar, let the developers know in the comment section below. Recently I was wondering, does filament flow differently in each hemisphere? Let me explain. This image here depicts a hurricane, and this image here depicts a cyclone. Maybe you think they're the same thing, just with a different name, but there is one important difference. If you examine the swirls, you'll notice that hurricanes spin anti-clockwise, and cyclones spin clockwise. And that's related to what part of the globe they form, thanks to the rotation of the Earth and the Coriolis force. A common idea that you'll hear is that toilets and sinks will drain in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, depending on whether they're located in the northern or southern hemisphere. Unfortunately, that seems to be proven as incorrect. A myth that's been perpetuated for decades thanks to popular culture and probably social media too. Recently, I was purging some filament through a 3D printer hot end and noticed that it was coming out in a clockwise formation. And that is exactly the same as the cyclones found in the southern hemisphere where I live. Thinking this must be a coincidence, I then extruded in free air on a number of my other printers and guess what? Every single one, without fail, extruded in a clockwise spiral. I don't want to get too excited, but it's possible I've stumbled on one of the greatest scientific discoveries of our time. Coincidence? Almost definitely, but I won't know for sure until you test this as well. Try it out and add to the comments what direction it goes and what hemisphere you're in. This next question is more serious and I wish I didn't have to ask it. And that is, why is the maker community becoming more toxic? FDM 3D printing, since its early RepRap days, has been about community. Back then 3D printing wasn't convenient or easy, so people worked together, collaborating to improve the results. 
I started my 3D printing journey in 2012 with a MakerBot Replicator 1. It's a fossil by today's standards, but I remember it being reliable and actually pretty good. However, that one was owned by my school, and my first personal 3D printer was the Solidoodle 2. Its feature list was pretty sparse, and I was part of a group that collaborated to bring advancements such as LCD displays. This amazing community was on Solid Forum, where everyone was respectful and enthusiastic about working together for the greater good. Fast forward to five or so years ago, and companies like Creality flooded the market with products like the Ender 3, which overall were fairly capable, but still had enough shortcomings that the community could work together, developing mods and upgrades. Fast forward again, and more and more manufacturers have entered the 3D printing market, and many of the new ones have not focused on a cheaper price, but instead adding smart features and ensuring their printer just works. With common problems eliminated, people tend to become more negative. Obviously, the problem's not in everyone, so let me explain with this standard distribution graph. The majority of people fall into the middle, the normal or average 3D printing enthusiasts. They enjoy the hobby, and they're open to lots of different products and ideas. Then we have people with what I call a reasonable preference or bias. This might be brand loyalty to one particular company, they might recommend this brand to others, but they don't try and force it down their throat. The problem comes from the extreme minorities on either side those people who have fallen victim to tribalism. If you don't agree with them, then you must be the enemy and you must be attacked. Let me give an example. On my channel, I've built a couple of premium Core XY printers, a Ratrig V-Core 3 and a Seket SK tank. The majority of people enjoyed watching along as I built the printers. But then there were these folks, and I'm sure some of them were just asking an innocent question in good faith, but they get lost amongst the chorus of build a Voron, build a Voron, build a Voron, a Voron would be better, this would be better on a Voron, have you heard of Voron, build a Voron. I'm sure you get the idea, and I couldn't even fit all of these on one screen. You wouldn't think it would be possible, but both of these printers I've built are actually fantastic. They were fun to build, I got to customise them how I liked, and they're both very fast and still have very high quality prints. I'm happy with my decision, and I know that my patrons, who chose to build Vorons, are happy with theirs as well. Almost as if there's more than one good option available. But you'd never know it, based on these comments polluting my channel. But unfortunately, the hardcore people are sometimes the loudest, despite being the minority. Currently, however, the toxicity has found a new home. Once again, it's not your average 3D printing enthusiast. It's the people who are either obsessed with Bamboo Lab or Prusa. On my Prusa XL video, there were people there with an irrationally large axe to grind, and when I tested the Bamboo Lab A1, there was plenty of irrational vitriol towards them too. Of course, the truth is that each of these printers has strengths and weaknesses. Currently, the multicolor prints from my XL aren't quite on par with those from Bamboo Lab, but the prints are relatively fast and don't waste that much filament. The same model and filament using a Bamboo Lab AMS is pretty close to flawless but it takes around 6 or 7 times longer and wastes all of this filament. But the people on the fringes of each of these groups won't accept that there's an engineering compromise made, and each approach pays off in different ways. But worse than that, they'll cherry pick any argument that makes their side look better, and if that fails, they'll just simply make things up. And honestly, it just ruins it for the rest of us. It's an underappreciated skill to accept and acknowledge differences in opinion without causing conflict, and I hope this is something the community practices more moving forward. I'll lighten the mood by asking, why does my filament snap like this? I think most people have noticed that as filament gets quite old, it deteriorates in quality and can become quite brittle. But my situation, well it was different. What you're seeing here is the reverse burden tube of my rat rig. And this is the piece of filament that came out of it, well eventually because it was really stuck. It looks like it snapped once, but if we look closer, we can see it's actually snapped in multiple places along the length. Of course, every time it snaps, that portion is a little bit wider and it likes to jam inside the tube. So my question is, what did I do to deserve this? What's a 3D printing equivalent of smashing a mirror, walking under a ladder or crossing a black cat? If you've got the answer, please save me in the comments. What is the 3D Benchy secret? And I imagine for most people, they don't even know that it has one. If you do 3D printing, it's probably impossible to not know what this is. The humble 3D Benchy is immensely popular as a benchmarking tool. The designers at Creative Tools included a range of geometry in the Benchy that allows you to test for accuracy, details, and test the performance in other ways such as overhangs and part cooling. It's actually quite a useful tool, more than you might think, which is why I previously made a video explaining how to use the Benchy as a diagnostic tool. But there is something mysterious missing from this list. 
and I believe it was the real Sam Prentice that revealed this shocking development when we were both guests in a live stream. If you have two benchies, you can turn one upside down and they actually slot together. Try not to have your mind blown when you test this for yourself. As soon as the proof became undeniable, my mind was racing. Is this another print quality test? Are we testing clearances and tolerances? No, that can't be right or it will be mentioned on the website. So that begs the question, do the designers of the 3D Benchy even know that this is a thing? What are the chances that dimensionally this is just a complete coincidence? How did Sam Prentice know about this? Is he the mastermind behind the whole thing? Is he trying to indoctrinate this poor person he's pretending to interview? Am I now in too deep? Is it still safe? Okay, I'm probably overreacting, but I would like to know whether this was an intentional design choice or just a happy accident. Again, share your knowledge and get your theories into the comments. One more and it's the most technical and serious of the lot. Our final question is, what creates these surface artifacts? I'll demonstrate this with a very simple example. Here is a rectangular prism printed on the Prusa XL and as you would hope, it looks pretty much flawless. But look what happens to it when we print a single cylinder alongside. Can you see it? Here it is highlighted and it's clearly a flaw compared to the original. It seems clear to me that the artifact on the tower is on the same plane as the top of the cylinder. So even though these are two separate objects, one of them can affect the other. This artifact was brought to my attention by patron Nova++ and they pointed out it doesn't only happen when you have separate models. It can occur when there's only one model in the print where features such as holes start and finish. They even created a test model to determine how any particular combination of hardware and software suffers from the artifact. I did print this and at first glance the artifact is not that obvious. However, when we change the lighting and turn the model sideways, all of a sudden it seems really clear. Even though this small bridge is down here, we clearly have an indentation where it starts and ends. The same goes for the adjacent bridge here and a small indentation for the top bridge. Interestingly enough, the cylinder doesn't seem to be affected, nor does this prism on the other side. So what is the culprit? At the moment, my current theory is flow rate. In the earlier parts of the model, the demands on the hot end are pretty uniform. Each shape has sparse infill and two perimeters. But once we get to the top of the cylinder, all of a sudden, there's a lot more plastic going through the hot end due to the multiple layers of solid infill. This increased flow might pull temperature out of the nozzle. And for this example, I think that fits because the filament looks more matte than shiny in that region, which is normally associated with cooler temperatures. And on other printers, that might form under extrusion, which leads to the little indentations. If you're confident you know the cause, please share it down below, because once it is known, I think it can be mitigated in the slicer. That brings us to the end with hopefully some food for thought. Thanks to my viewers and patrons for their ongoing support in 2023. I wish you a happy new year and hope that 2024 brings you happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.